Yeah, it's on. Just give it a bash. Ah, uh, yeah. I'll give it a bash. I'm a good basher at this thing. Would <laughs> <laughs> you all hear me anyway? Yeah, yeah speak out. <laughs> Well done, you guys. Very, very good. Give them a big hand, will you? They did a good job. <laughs> you can <come> through. <laughs> Praise God. Thank you. Put, it, put him up, will you? Well, I feel a bit. I feel a bit different standing up here than I did down there. I tell you. <laughs> That's why we never get up there. Yeah. But yeah, you know, I just, I just got to ask the Holy Spirit now, just to, just to give me the words to speak, because that's one of His promises, you know. And um, because I've got some really, really important stuff to say. I, I um, first of all, isn't it, isn't it such a shame that they don't, they don't have. Bibles in schools or motels anymore. Yep. You know, and I ended up in the place where you end up without them in prison. Thank God they still got them there. Amen. You know? Amen. And uh, you know, in prison, I, I reached out to God, and all these people outside were hearing about what was going on inside, and I ended up doing a uh, a course in uh, Christian fellowship, and. Uh, Wow, I had two tables every day covered with papers, and I, you know, when I when I first started, I I, um, I remember I was really really struggling because I didn't I didn't at school, you know, I had a lot of fun at school, but one thing I, I remember saying to the teacher, you know, I don't even remember what subject it was. That's how bad I was at school, but anyway. So uh, mass, it was mass, you know, and, <laughs> and he was talking about square cube meters and stuff like that. I said, "Listen here, mate, I'm never going to go to the shop and ask for six cube quares of mixed lollies, right? <laughs> okay, so so just leave it at that, and, and I, I'll, I'll get back to annoying the class type thing, you know. But anyway, later on in life, later on in life, it happened. I I needed some pavers, and they said, "How many square cube meters do you need?" <laughs> so, <laughs> So we, we've got to we've got to learn we've got to learn to, to to listen and you know one thing I'm not going to do here today is 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 come up here and say you know I don't smoke I don't I don't smoke I don't drink I don't swear and then get out to my car and look in the glove box and say oh shit where's my bloody smokes going oh no I left them at the pub <laughs> you know what I mean but anyway you know it's like you know God God just wants us to give us give us truthful truthful testimony and mm. and even exaggeration is 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 uh you know it's a lie it's a lie you know a fish was that big no nah, it's that big it's a lie you know mm. God God wants us to be truthful in all things you know and and we all we all suffer daily you know with 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 uh with uh with our struggles and and you know if if you say you don't well then you're a liar simple as that you know but anyway what i was going to say is that i started doing this um this course and um i remember i i'd get i'd, I'd get into into it and and so i only had i only had a year to finish it and it was a three-year course because they were closing down and and some of the things that i did there i was doing in one weekend you know what i mean and 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 I was, I'd get my, I'd get my grades back, and and I was get, I was getting like scores that that you don't get, and it was all on paper. I had no computer, and I, I just started crying my eyes out, saying, "Thank you, God," because I was, I was getting like above grade awards that they don't even give on these things. You know what I mean? And then, then I started, I started, uh, you know, I was, I was bringing people to church and stuff, and then, um, you know, another, another friend there. You know, you see people, and, and he's just sitting on the tree one day, and and like that, and it's, it was like an angel. You know what I mean? And it, well, you've all heard of the Gideons, right? Yep. The Gideons, right? Well, his dad was a major part of that, and we ended up getting boxes and boxes, and well, actually, I didn't. He did. That's exaggeration, right? Okay. <laughs> so anyway, I just I just gave out that many Bibles, and 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 just. I ended up doing some some talks in the church there, and and um, 
I remember one Christmas I, I gave a, a sermon and, and the preacher said, you know, that's honestly, Eric, I can tell you were a bit nervous. But that's why I, when I first came up here you know, and I said, oh, I feel a bit funny up here, you know what I mean? But, you know, I was so nervous and he said, you know what, that's the best Christmas sermon I've ever heard and he's he's a preacher you know what I mean and I was so proud I started crying you know, you know afterwards but you know and then um then you know I started doing the church services uh sometimes in and and you know once I remember that all these you know big tough boys just like I used to be you know they all rock up they come there to meet so they could get drugs you know what I mean and it got it ended up getting stopped but but you know I wasn't prepared because you know what that that night the um the preacher didn't even turn up something happened and just you know someone someone there just said oh Hebrews 12 and I just started reading from Hebrews 12 and all these guys started agreeing wow this this guy you can see you can see something in him you know and God can see something in all of us and and you know what it says like after that after that I, I ended up getting permission from from the officers right to do to do another another thing and this is just before I left and and not only did was I allowed to do it in front of front of the whole unit but the the officers also were watching as well and I was so blessed you know and and anyway this all this all got out outside you know that he's a preacher he's a preacher he's a preacher you know what I mean and and you know I don't really hear that anymore out here but but wow, in there, you know, I was, I was getting people to threaten to bash me. Oh, preacher boy, rah, rah, rah. And, you know, you know what we've got to recognise is, is that, you know, when we're, when, we're, when we're persecuted, we're really blessed, you know. Oh, and and I, was, I, was taking, I was taking these people that, that, that Jesus would take along, you know, the worst sinners of all, you know. And, and, and I, was, I was getting persecuted for, for that, you know, because there's some pretty, pretty bad people in jail, as you can imagine. But anyway, today I was I was driving up here, and it, you know the Bible says that that man makes his steps, but God plans his paths. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I, I seen this guy that that I used to sell drugs to um, about two months ago, and I stopped and I said hello. And you know what? It's like it's like Raph comes in here with. The mustard seed sometimes and he's just throws it around you know it's it's all about planting seed you know and and i seen him uh and he said he, he's going to come to church and and uh i seen him again today and i pulled over and i'm honking the horn he said wow look at your car man i said i said yeah yeah do you want to come along to church he said nah but you have a cigarette and you know sometimes sometimes in life you don't have to say much at all that that just the way you're living is 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 enough enough testimony as it is because everything that had to be said was said by him today you know and uh he said no I've got no I've got no cigarettes he said you don't even smoke anymore do you you know and I said no I don't I don't he said, and he seen my bible and he said, he said you're going to church aren't you I said yeah you come on you want to come you know what I didn't want to give him a 50 because I knew where it'd go yeah. go straight on a hit you know what I mean so I had, I had, uh, I had my uh, 20, 25 bucks and then I, I gave him that, you know what? And he said, that's the best Christmas present I ever got. But you know what? It's, it's not. The best Christmas present anyone can get is, is, is Jesus' birth, oh, yeah. you know? It's, it's such a, you know, Jesus was born of the Spirit and so are we. But thank Amen. you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Well done, Set. mate. Thank you. Good on you. <laughs> You're a beauty. Me, I get Well done. It brings a joy to your heart, doesn't it? <laughs> Good on you. Thank you, Lord. Well, that is the best Christmas present anybody could ever get. Yeah. Do you know your testimonies are a living word? You know, you don't need to get here and read this verbatim. You need to live it. Let the word come out of you as you live it. And it's a testimony. So Francis Assisi once said, he said, Go ye therefore into the whole world and preach the gospel, and if you have to, open your mouth. <laughs> and that's the truth. That's the truth. People look at you and they see the change in you. 
and it's just the most wonderful thing. You inspire me, I tell you, I sit down the back there sometimes and I see the joy in this man's heart worshipping God. <laughs> and it brings a joy into my heart and I'm sure it brings a joy into all your hearts. Yeah, so keep it up, mate. You're a beauty. Can't hold him down, eh? Now, this some young lady wanted me to speak uh, Psalm 19, verse 1. And it says, The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament shows his handiwork. That's part of the handiwork. You're all part of the handiwork of God. The stars in the sky declare who he is. Amen? That's what he made. And every time, if you, if you doubt God's alive, just look up. <laughs> just look up. Look at a tree. See the grass growing. <laughs> that doesn't happen by accident, does it? Amen? Praise God. Um, I want to I sing a secular song to you. You know, sometimes people look down on you if you ever listen to secular music. But I've got to tell you, I was brought up on the Beatles. <laughs> as a kid and uh, th this might just wrangle a few religious spirits or I don't care really <laughs> I um, I want to sing you this song by the Beatles and I want you to refer it to the Lord can you do that yeah. can I have that, a, a mic I'll try that one up there Is that one working now praise God Thanks. Yeah, come you can stand next to me, we'll sing it together. Eh? <laughs> but, um, praying for a lot of people, and I see a lot of people struggle. I struggle at times. And I'm thinking, why is it we struggle? You know, we sometimes we're up there with God, and then all of a sudden we're in a valley, then we're up there again. Anybody like that? I am, I'm like that all the time. <laughs> and some people look at us, they like, you're cruising, you're up there. No, we go through our valleys as well as our heights, okay? And, and all I know is life is a, is a journey. It's not a done thing, even though it's been done. <laughs> he said it was finished, <laughs> and it is. If we can enter into that finished work of Christ, we are cruising. Doesn't matter what comes at you, you've got the answer. But in my experience, I see people struggling, even though they've received the Holy Spirit, they're filled with the Spirit of God, and they still struggle. I see people need deliverance 40 years into their walk. <laughs> Some denominations don't believe in Christians needing deliverance, but I... I want to tell you, I've seen lots of demonised pastor's wives, okay? <laughs> and not, I'm not my own, much. he's delivered. <laughs> but you know what I mean? <laughs> hey, say by a word. <laughs> I've got to tell you, I have. I've seen lots of Christians who've been walking the walk for a long, long time still need deliverance and that tells me a lot that tells me there's a religious spirit that stops them receiving something there's a dead limb in their life that needs to be cut off john 15. i don't care how long you've been in the lord there are still dead limbs that he's lopping off you can we should we go to john 15 shall we uh, this is changing mate i had all this set but it doesn't work <laughs> Praise God. John 15. I've got to tell you, this is, this is my favourite scripture because I still remember the day 24 years ago down at the point at Middleton where he spoke to me and he said, he said, according to this word, you ask me anything you want. Anybody want to hear that from God? Yes. Well, I've got to tell you, I heard it audibly and in my spirit. He said to me, whatever you want on the basis of this word, you ask me. And he said, and I will answer. You will have exactly what you're asking for. I will answer. And by this answer coming to you, people will know. 
They will know you're my disciple. They will know because you'll bear fruit and you'll bring glory to the Father. So that John 15 is very, very important to me. It's something that's held me in good stead whenever I've needed encouragement. I get it from that one word. Amen. This is amazing, this Bible. I've got a Bible with all tags on it. They're useless to me. Here we are. <laughs> Praise God. And I've got a pair of glasses and they're useless unless you put them on. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> oh, it is. Well, that's the same as praying in tongues, you know. You may have the gift. If you don't use it, it's useless to you. Okay, but the power in that gift is going to change your life because that gift is a gift to purge you. That gift is a gift to cleanse you. It's a gift to bring fruit. John 15, what's it say? We'll start at the beginning. It says, I'm the true vine and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that doesn't bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. There are dead branches in every one of us. You realise that? That's what he's telling us. <laughs> he's saying there's some branches in there, but the only one who can prune them right and know what's going to come from them is the Father through the power of the Holy Spirit, paid for by Jesus. Amen? He says, you're already clean because of the word which I've spoken to you. Now, we've heard that today already. Abide in me and I in you and the branch... As the, branch, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. Now, you could just dwell on that and last all year on that one scripture and be fed. Praise God. He says, I'm the vine and you're the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. You know, when you abide in something, it means you're living there. <laughs> you're living there. If you live in me, you can translate it that way if you want it. If you live in me, I'm the vine, you're the branches. Whoever lives in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. Anyone who doesn't abide in me, he's cast out as a branch and is withered. And they gather them and throw them into the fire and they're burnt. Who gathers them? Well, I want to tell you there's lots of places that gather people with false teaching. <laughs> Amen? And they go off track and they wonder why they're not seeing the hand of God. They want, the Word of God is our tenant. If ever you have a problem, get back to the Word of God. Everything is proven by the Word of God. God always points back to his Word. He speaks to you. He confirms his word. You can go off on a religious tangent and think you're doing great stuff for God and it means nothing unless it's based on his word. It means nothing unless he backs it. It means nothing unless he has actually put it into place. You see, the seed is sown as you spoke a second ago. I throw seed out every time I open my mouth. Why? Because the word of God lands on people's hearts and there's... He speaks of so many different types of soils, paths, rocky paths. He speaks about where the word can fall on stony paths where there's uh, thorns. But, you know, he speaks about a man whose heart has been well prepared and he go 30, 60 and 100 fold. He will bear 30, 60 and 100 fold. And we've often preached Romans 12 where God's asking you to ask him for stuff. John 15, where he's asking you to ask for things. And if it's birthed out of the Spirit, you're going to see 100-fold. But I want to tell you, if there's some dead branches and you're not bearing fruit, they've got to be cut off. They have to be purged. There's things in us that stop us fulfilling the 100-fold. Born-again Christians are that plot of land he's speaking of. Born-again Christians, born of the Spirit of God, are soil that's fertile and will start to bear fruit. 
If it's 100 fold, it means that it's been set in place by the Spirit of God. That seed has been planted and the Spirit of God's on what's being grown. The seed of Jesus Christ was planted in every one of us. It's incorruptible. It's safe. Nothing can touch that. It's the truth. But I want to tell you, we walk around in life and we don't let him touch some of the stuff he wants to purge. We don't let him touch it. Oh, no, I'm okay with that. Complacency. Mate, my worst enemy. <laughs> Probably one of the last seeds he wants to touch in me. You know, I let him get the 30, the 60. The hardest thing for him to get is the 40% remaining. <laughs> Because now I'm a very religious, righteous person. <laughs> and I'm okay, Jack. <laughs> well, I want to tell you, that's the hardest 40%. It's deep. It's deep in me. He wants to get to it. And he's given me a way of doing it. He's given me his Holy Spirit. And what happens when I pray in tongues? I'm purging. I'm purging the old man. I'm getting rid of the old and letting him put on the new in me. That 40% is so hard for him to get to because he wants your permission to purge it. Yeah, I feel exactly like that. Ah! <laughs> he wants that. He wants to be able to access those dead limbs in us that he's speaking about in John 15. Because he wants us 100% effective. This isn't about your salvation. This is about the work that he's placed in your life to do. He knew who you were before you ever got to this earth. He knew what he planted in you and he knew the beginning from the end. So he knows you can get there. But the Holy Spirit is waiting for you to give your authority to him. Your authority holds on to what we know. I've got to tell you, I know lots of stuff you don't, and you know lots of stuff that I don't. But that's no good to me if it's not for the kingdom. If it's not used for the kingdom, it's useless. It's worthless. If it doesn't bear fruit, if I don't allow myself to be purged by the Spirit of God, then I'm not doing what he's calling me to do. If I don't allow him to purge, and I want to tell you, purging is a painful thing <laughs> you don't think actually you just said something before it just touched my heart lying i was a liar i was a good liar too i was a liar you jogged my memory i don't think i lie these days but of course i do <laughs> we all do yeah exactly we think they're white gray He's not an artist when it comes to lies. Lies are black or they're white. <laughs> you know? A lie is a lie, as you said before. He wants to purge the lying out of your life because he can't bless anything that hasn't got truth in it. God cannot bless anything but truth. If you've got deceit in your life in any way, shape or form, God can't bless that area of your life. Everything that you see in your life that's wrong is generally based on a lie. <laughs> Amen? Have you noticed that? It starts with a little lie, you keep growing on it and building on it and building on it. You end up believing your own opinion in the end. <laughs> Sorry. I don't know why I was walking that way, really. <laughs> but I'm going this way now. <laughs> <laughs> we, end up, <laughs> we, we end up believing our own opinion so often as the truth. But if it's based on a lie in the beginning, then it's only compounding the lie. And God wants to deal with that. Sometimes that's a limb in your life that needs to be cut off. Because otherwise people go on until they die still believing lies and won't let him touch them. The Holy Spirit's a gentleman. He will not take from you what you don't give to him to deal with. How's that? Does that help? Some people pray continually in the Spirit and never see change. 
Anybody feel like that? Like that? You pray Ramasia Karaba Shindirimunda Karabaya. And you do it for hours on end and you expect to see a change in your life, don't you? And they don't. Some people are praying for healing in tongues and don't see it. Have you ever noticed that? Well, you've gone quiet or you mob. That must be hitting home. <laughs> Have you ever noticed that when you pray in tongues, you're supposed to, this is a perfect prayer. It's the Holy Spirit praying on your behalf. So there should be an answer. Have you noticed that? I'm giving you a reason why people aren't getting healed because they can pray and pray and pray but not allow him to purge them. When they pray and pray and pray, I want to tell you most of the time they're getting themselves to the place or the Holy Spirit is getting them to the place where they're ready to deal with themselves. And sometimes you may be praying for a whole year solid trying to get to that place where you'll allow the Spirit of God because you need courage to deal with what's inside you. I don't know about you, but I, I can still sin like the very best of sinners. Are you, see, preachers aren't supposed to do this. <laughs> <laughs> but I want to tell you, I apply the word to myself before I ever apply it to you. I apply it to myself first because I, I learn from what he's doing in me. And I know that when I'm praying, something must be happening. When I'm praying in the Spirit, God is actually doing a work in me. He knows what I need. The Holy Spirit knows me better than I know myself. So I need to see fruit of my praying in the Spirit. And when I don't see it, I ask questions. Say, Lord, what's happening? This is a revelatory gift you're giving me. Please tell me what's wrong. And you know what he says to me? He says, you're not ready. <laughs> you're not ready. I need you to give it over to me and then I'll deal with it. But while you're holding on to it, I can't. While you're hanging on to it, I cannot deal with it. You're not ready. All the praying in the spirit is preparing you to hand it over. And that might, that might take years <laughs> because it takes courage. Anybody getting anything out of this today? Because I want to tell you, you're going to get answered prayer out of this today. Amen. You're going to get answered prayer out of this today. When I pray in the Spirit, I'm allowing the Lord to chop out the dead branches. It takes courage. You know, when you're a liar, I used to be a... Um, a salesman, chiefest of liars. <laughs> Any salesman in the house? Sorry. <laughs> chiefest of liars. i got to tell you, I was a good salesman until I came into the kingdom. <laughs> I was. I used to top sales. I'll give you an example. I, I used to do outdoor advertising. And, um, and I worked with about ten other guys at Claude Neon. And I saw that the guys who were doing national, national ads, you know, like big companies like ANZ or uh, Sander or, you know, those big names, uh, Westpac, those guys who were selling to those people could sell huge signs worth millions of dollars. And so the commission was fantastic and I wanted to do commission. I wanted to earn money. And they wouldn't, they wouldn't do it. They wouldn't let me touch it. Yet I ended up doing all the groundwork for them, for the guys who handled it. And so I got to know the business. And in the end, I said to them, I said, I'm quitting. I said, you're retarding me. You're stopping me from growing. <laughs> and so I went out on my own. I formed a company. And I went to all the big people, all the big companies that I'd, I'd worked and done base work with. And I said to them, I said, you know, there's signs and areas that you guys aren't being given and I've got access to them and you've got higher traffic counts. Will you allow me to look after your, your uh, signage? They said, yeah. Now, I was signing accounts. In those days, this was a lot of money. This is 40 years ago now. I was assigned, signing accounts for over a half a million dollars 
And I could put any commission I liked on that. And I went to Claude Neal and I said, you guys aren't moving these signs and I've got clients who want them. And so I would go to them and I would say this, you sell the sign to me and I will resell to them. They said, no, we can't do that. I, did, I figured that they wouldn't do it. I said, okay. I said, I'll sign it on one of your contracts for you, but I want to put as much commission on it as I want. And I've got to tell you, I was making $30,000 a month then. <laughs> and I was boozing it up against the wall too, I must admit. It wasn't doing me any good. <laughs> but I would do this. And I knew I had a, a good mind, I was a good salesman, and I could lie with the best of them. <laughs> and then I came to the kingdom of God, and guess what happened? I couldn't sell because I had to tell the truth. I couldn't sell because I had to tell the truth. And that area in my life, he had to purge in me because it was built into me to do that. Exaggerations, I like that, mate. <laughs> yeah. Fisherman. I caught a fish this big. <laughs> There's stuff in us that reveal these limbs that still need lopping off. <laughs> Do you know that? There are things in us that we need to give over to him and allow him to lop off. When we pray in the spirit, we are preparing the ground. So it comes a hundredfold. The last 40% is the hardest to get. 30, 60, 100. The last 40%, he purges you off so you can fulfill the call. In your life and so when you're praying the spirit you're doing yourself so much good you're actually building the edifice and god wants you to start doing that he's preparing the ground in you to be able to hand it over and hand the authority that you still hold which stops him using you you know dying to self we heard that earlier dying to self is allowing him to cut the limbs off that aren't bearing fruit Complacency is another one. Oh, I like languishing here on a Sunday, getting the beautiful worship, listening to that wonderful preacher. <laughs> Praise God. That doesn't grow you. The word I speak will grow you, but you need to put it into action. You need to do something with it. It's the word. It's the word of God in us. You become living word when you start acting on the word of God. Those limbs in you that aren't bearing fruit need to be handed over. And some of you can't do it. It's not something you can just do. The Holy Spirit's got to prepare it because all change comes from the inside out, not from the outside in. All change comes from your heart. That's where the change comes. And I want to tell you, we're on the verge of an incredible outpouring of God in this country, but we have to prepare our hearts. There can be pockets of people who are so full on for God. So there's one there. Full on for God. Pockets of people who are going to be raised up by the Spirit of God at this time and we're going to see revival. But we're the ones who have to be revived. Do you know that? We are the people who need reviving. Us old Pentecostals. We haven't got it made in the shade unless we start giving it over. It's not about money. It's about our hearts. It's about our hearts being changed by God, allowing him to come in and take over, dying to ourselves. Most people think Jesus died once. I want to tell you he died every day of his life and he died to himself to be able to achieve and, and, and pay the ultimate price for the whole world, not to have to worry because he died for them and took the punishment on himself. That's what Christmas is about. Christmas is about letting him have his way in us. Amen? You've had enough today. You've had words, you've had music. Just open your hands. Look to the Lord, will you? I just want to pray a little prayer over you for this Christmas. Father, I thank you to lift the veils off the eyes of every person in this place. 
Lift the veils off their eyes, Father, by the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. Let them see the truth and the truth will set them free. <sighs> Let them cut off the lies that they've been believing for so long and building that foundation of lies. Take it out of our lives today, Lord, in Jesus' name. Cut it off. Apply the blood, we pray, Lord. Cut it off us in Jesus' name. Give us eyes to see in this new year, Lord. Give us eyes to see what we need to hand over, the limbs that need to be chopped off. Give us strength to go through this, Lord, by the power of your Holy Spirit. Lord, we thank you that your love is what sets us free. Oh, thank you, Lord. We we'll give you honour and glory. Some of you are going to be changed. In the middle of the night, God's going to speak to you. He's going to just come and speak clearly to you. And he's going to start pinpointing things he needs you to give over. Pray in the spirit. Get ready. Get ready. Pray in the spirit. He's preparing the ground. He's tilling the ground. And that's his job. He wants to do it. He loves to bring you to the place where you're willing. Be willing for God. Be willing. I'm preaching to myself today, okay? If you're here listening, well, you're in a good place. <laughs> I'm preaching to myself. Be willing to change. Be willing to change. I want to tell you the best is yet to come from every one of us. Yes. Amen. The best is yet. That 40% is the best that's yet to come. Do you know that? That takes us into the hundredfold. He wants us to become productive land. And I give you honour and glory, Father, for this word. Let this word be remembered in the hearts of the listeners, Father, in Jesus' name. And all the saints said, Amen. God bless you. We better have communion, otherwise you'll think we're Pharisees. <laughs> Praise God. Thanks. Good to see you here, Dick. Good to see you. <laughs> Praise God.